Well, after 11 years of business, the Kimball County Visitor Center, at 204 Kimball Boulevard, is sad to say the high point of your Nebraska adventure is shutting down next month. They are closing on Tuesday, October 15th. Until then, they are there Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. and Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. They are encouraging people to come in to see them and their gift shop and support their local vendors. They said we'll miss you all. And here are the details of everything that they announced on Friday morning as they announce everything including an open house on Saturday, October 5th prior to their shutdown date of Tuesday, October 15th as well. Well, October 5th, we are going to be having a open house to say goodbye to everyone. Okay, we're going to be having a fruit, meat and che cheese tray. And um, we'll have the open during our hours of 10 to 4. And we're asking our vendors to discount the items so that we can sell them instead of them having to haul them home. Okay. Oh yeah, awesome. That sounds sounds good. Yeah, uh, and the uh, yes, and the visitor center shuts down. I think October fifteenth. Mm -hmm. October fifteenth will be the last day. Our open house is October fifth. Okay. Oh, that's cool. So there's gonna be ten days starting. There's gonna be ten days left when that time comes. Ten days of what, honey? Uh, ten more days of business left when that time comes. True. True. Oh, yeah. And we'll try to sell as much as we can so that the vendors get the last of what we can offer here. Sounds good, yeah. According to Flores, the consensus throughout the state in many counties is that we should hang on to as much money as we can for now because of the impact we will probably see in the years to come. He continued, one of the things we regrettably had to do was make a decision on the visitor center, and that was to close the visitor center October 15th. Meetings of the Visitor Center Committee will continue on a monthly basis. The lodging tax also will continue in the county. We have been working on economic development for a while, and it looks like it is getting off the ground, Flora said. It will entail economic development and tourism. Talking to the county attorney, it will fall within the rules and regulations to use tourism for the lodging tax. On Wednesday, September 4, 2024, the Kimball County Sheriff's Office arrested Philip Nicely, 30, for assault by strangulation. All subjects are presumed innocent until proven guilty. On Monday, September 9, 2024, the Kimball County Sheriff's Office arrested Gilbert Ecoffee, 36, for possession of a deadly weapon by a prohibited person and possession of a controlled substance. They also arrested Richard Ecoffee, 61, for possession of a deadly weapon by a prohibited person and possession of a controlled substance. The Kimball Police Department assisted in the arrest of both suspects. All subjects are presumed innocent until proven guilty. Also on Monday, September 9, 2024, the Kimball County Sheriff's Office arrested Brittany Gilmore, 27, for possession of exceptionally dangerous drugs. They also arrested Chalky Langley Jr., 62, for possession of exceptionally dangerous drugs and possession of a deadly weapon by a prohibited person. The Nebraska State Patrol and Kimball Police Department assisted in those arrests. Mary Lynch Elementary held its first deposit day of its student savings program on Thursday, September 5, which brought in $563.35 by the students. The school partnered with First Tier Bank to bring an in-school bank to the elementary school called the Longhorn Branch. Each Thursday, bank employees visit the school to set up the bank and the library with the help of five sixth grade students as the bank tellers. These five students applied for the job at the end of their fifth grade year, and after the interview process they got the job to help with the bank this year. 58 students have signed up so far to participate in the program, and 49 of those participated on opening day. Students who wish to put money in their savings account can bring money every week in a deposit slip that is provided by the school. The bank tellers record every student's deposit in a registry to keep track of what each student has saved. The students are presented with their savings at their sixth grade graduation. Mary Lynch Elementary Principal Amanda Kulek says this program is truly trying to raise financially responsible kiddos, and just giving that one more opportunity to give exposure to that. First Year Bank also matched students' first deposit up to $5, so they matched the first $5 for every deposit that was made. With the bank match, the total money saved is $803.35 after the first deposit day. The students will also earn little prizes as they hit certain milestones with their deposits. For example, when a student makes their first deposit,
they get a candy bar, and after three deposits they get a special eraser or highlighter, and so on. First Tier Bank will be sending out a weekly newsletter giving the results of what was saved that week by students, along with offering a financial tidbit. The Kimball Longhorn football team earned a decisive win over Bayard on Saturday, beating the visiting Tigers 54-26. A stingy defense and a very productive offense led the Horns to their first win of the season. Led by senior No Trevino with five touchdowns on the day, including one interception returned for a TD, the Longhorns scored a total of eight touchdowns and three 2PT extra point conversions. Also scoring for the Longhorns were junior quarterback, Trevor Fuss sophomore fullback, Greg Bingham and freshman running back, Braden Fuss. Defensive standouts for Kimball included senior, Derek Russell, Trevor Fuss, and sophomore Cameron Maginus. Highlights for Bayard included a kickoff return for a touchdown by junior Anderson Gowarder, and a 40-yard fumble scoop and score from 230-pound sophomore lineman Connor Posey. The Longhorns are back in action this Friday, at home against the visiting St. Pat's Irish from North Platte. As the city of Kimball expects growth, multiple housing developments have been in the works, including a project by a longtime Kimball family, the Metis. The city council approved the Metis development in a meeting over the summer which will consist of four modular duplexes, one of which is already built. Anna and Wesley Metis bought the first building when it was up for sale, and outlined their project around that. It is a single-story ranch-style duplex a little over 2,000 square feet, and has three bedrooms and two and a half baths. Anna and Wesley's son Mark is overseeing the project, and he said there is not yet a timeline on when the first building will be installed on the property. He is hoping to get the foundation poured soon, and then it would take about a month for it to cure then they can get the structure installed. The building has a little bit more interior and exterior work to do post-setting, but for the most part, it is completed. We're a little family building them as we go so that's been the challenge for us, we're not building the entire thing at once, Mark Mita said. We'll get the plat done then doing one at a time once we get one going and some income we'll work on the next one. The other three duplexes will be two-story townhomes, around 2,000 square feet and will possibly have a garage built along the front so each townhouse can have a bedroom built over the top of the garage. The single-story unit will run north to south while the two-story units will run east to west. The lot is on Nadine Street between 2nd and 3rd Street. The Midas have always wanted to build something on the plot of land since they have owned it for the past few decades, so when the opportunity presented itself, they went for it. It's a nice area of Kimball, so it's a great opportunity for the location, and they've owned the hotel for about 28 years, so they will eventually want to retire and have a source of income, Mark Mita said. They have a lot of customers at the hotel who request extended stays, so it would be a good business opportunity on that end as well. The hometown hardware building at 212 South Chestnut Street in downtown Kimball is for sale. People who are interested are being asked to contact the manager at 308-230-0112 and leave a message. Water crews were working on a leak on Jefferson between 3rd and 4th Street on Sunday. They had the section of Jefferson shut down and diverting traffic on eastbound Highway 30 to keep the crew safe as they work on repairs. They were working as quickly and efficiently as possible while maintaining the safety of the crew to restore water and water pressure to the area neighbors affected. After weeks of discussing the city's budget, the Kimball City Council needs to make a final decision next week. Mayor John Morrison says they have been put in a bind with the budget and property taxes due to Nebraska legislature passing Legislative Bill 34. The state has put a cap on how high the city can raise the levy, and they also raise the price of what the city assesses properties at due to the increase of houses' values. Morrison said on a typical $300,000 house, it would be a $500 increase from the year before. 400 of it is because of the increased assessment not because of the increase in levy. The council is leaning toward raising the levy to the maximum amount that the state allows, which would be 0.41, Morrison said, because what they said it now will need to work for years to come. We're trying to do the right thing for the city because we all still want police and fire departments that's where property tax goes to Morrison said. The city council and the county commissioners are required to hold a special meeting to raise the levy, which is set for September 16th at the courthouse. The city council will make its final decision about the budget and the levy in a special meeting on September 24. The state's goal is to control property taxes, which as a mayor and property tax owner, I do not understand because the state does not collect property taxes, they go back to the individual counties and cities, Morrison said. That's why you elect officials you elect officials to set our property tax.
Kimball County Commissioner Rich Flores also expressed his frustrations in a meeting where he announced the visitor center will be closing, according to the observer. Flores said in the meeting, due to budget constraints in LB34, thank you governor for that, we really had to tighten our belts. He continued saying the consensus throughout the state in many counties is that we should hang on to as much money as we can for now because of the impact we will probably see in the years to come. If you want to include input about the issue, please attend the meeting on September 10th and 16th. We will listen and give you reasons as to why we decide what we will, but realistically you should be talking to your state senators because they're the ones passing the bills, Morrison said. That is all in local news. At Kimball State Bank and Kimball Insurance, products we offer are home, auto, business, truck, farm, life, boat, RV, motorcycle, ATV, rental homes, vacant homes, and SR-22 auto policies. Hours of operation are Monday through Thursday from 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m., Fridays 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m., Saturdays by appointment and closed on Sundays. We are conveniently located at 205 South Locust Street, four blocks west of the stoplights off Highway 30. For more than a century, Kimball State Bank and Insurance has been serving our community and will continue for more years to come. Call us at 308-235-4629 for more information or stop by 205 South Locust Street. KIMB A Network Blogspot is your hometown sports leader for Kimball and Kimball County, Nebraska. At KIMB A Network Blogspot, we cover the Kimball Longhorns and we have full coverage all year round. Football and volleyball in the fall along with basketball and wrestling in the late fall and early winter. Many teams play the Longhorns throughout the year. The Pine Bluffs, Hornets, Bayard Tigers, Bridgeport Bulldogs, Hershey Panthers, Mitchell Tigers, Layton Warriors, Banner County Wildcats, the Potter Dicks Coyotes, the Chase County Longhorns, Perkins County, the Sydney Red Raiders and more. Tune into KIMB a network blog spot all season long and watch and listen to all games all season long, all year long. KIMB a network blog spot is home of the Kimball Longhorns. Now tell me, who has time to drive all over Tarnation trying to find everything for home, work, the hunting season ahead, or the party this weekend? That's why Kimball Ace Hardware works hard to be a one-stop shop. From hardware to housewares, grills to guns, and tools to tequila, if Ace don't have it, you don't need it. With the area's most knowledgeable staff, the helpful hardware folks are fixing you up with a lot more than nuts and bolts. Open 8 to 6 Monday through Saturday, 9 to 5 on Sundays, or you can shop anytime at acehardware.com. Park Terrace Apartments in Kimball has openings for those who qualify. Park Terrace provides residents in our community with a comfortable and affordable home. Their one-bedroom units are well-maintained and remodeled in a quiet and easily accessible location with an established community of residents. Qualifications include 62 years of age and older and or disabled and low income. Park Terrace is an equal housing opportunity facility. For more information, a tour or to apply, call 308-235-2226. Try our online shopping website at shopmsm.com or you can download our app, Main Street Market PCA, and you can start shopping online today. At Crossman Construction, we provide free estimates on garage doors and openers, window siding, seamless gutter, doors, custom cabinets and remodel. For any project. Call us at 308-235-4999 or 308-235-5954 and we will help you. You can also stop by our location at 205 South Oak Street. The Roof RV Park is located at 28 Roof Drive, Kimball, Nebraska 69145. You can call them at 308-241-1210, visit their website at www.roeprv.com or email roeprv at outlook.com. They have oversized spaces, heated water, hookups, 20, 30 and 50 amp, electric service included. Extra parking area tents are welcome. No services. Daily weekly monthly rates are $40, $200 and $460. On I-80, you go east to exit 22, you then go north on Highway 71 to 53 E Link and west at 5th Street. It is open year-round. It is conveniently located off the interstate and close to city amenities. Call us at 308-241-1210.
that is 308-241-1210. Call now. Clean Harbors is currently looking for multiple candidates for open positions at their Kimball facility. Apply today to work for an award-winning team and stay for a rewarding career. Qualified candidates must have high school diploma, the ability to work in a team environment, possess good communication and organizational skills, as well as an excellent commitment to health and safety. Benefits include competitive pay, health coverage after 30 days, 401k match, as well as growth opportunities, generous paid time off, and tuition reimbursement. For more information and a complete list of open positions, visit careers.cleanharbors.com. Clean Harbor, sustainability in action. A Broncos potluck at beer and loathing is taking place on four Sundays in a row. Bring a dish to participate and have food there by halftime. You can enter to win bar favorite dish. September 8th versus Seattle Seahawks with your favorite dish. September 15th versus Steelers with meat and potatoes. September 22nd versus Tampa Bay with seafood. And September 29th versus Jets with pizza. Again, this is at the Beer and Loathing Bar and Grill located at 206 South Chestnut Street in downtown Kimball. Visit backcountry69145.com. This is sponsored by Ashley's Custom Embroidery. For more information, call Ashley's Custom Embroidery and more at 308-235-5144 or the Beer and Loathing Bar at 308-230-2223. The Kimball Farmers Day 3rd Annual Food Fair and Vendor Event will be held on Friday, September 27th and Saturday, September 28th from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. at 2nd Street and Chestnut Street. For more information or to reserve your spot, call or text 308-672-9724. Presenting an $8,000 purse. It's a tournament of destruction. Where cars come to die. Sponsored by Kimball County Ag Society. It's the Cleanup Derby. Cleanup Derby in Kimball, Nebraska at the Kimball Fairgrounds on Saturday evening, September 28, 2024. Compact chain up, full well check-in is at 12 to 3 p.m. There is a $50 entry, $25 pit pass. A driver's meeting will be held at 4 p.m. Start time is 5 p.m. Contact Clark Hoddell for demo at 308-235-5672. New this year is a pickup tug. Compact one half ton, three fourths ton, one ton. Contact Spencer Teasley at 970-534-5700. Cost for admission is $10 for adults and $5 for children under 10 years old. No Imperials before 1974, and no greater blades will be strongly enforced. From the KIMB Weather Center, this is your weather outlook for the next week. Tonight, mostly clear with a low around 55. East wind 5 to 10 miles per hour becoming west-southwest after midnight. Wednesday, a slight chance of showers between 9 a.m. and noon, then a chance of showers and thunderstorms after noon. Mostly sunny, with a high near 88. Breezy, with a west-southwest wind 10 to 15 miles per hour becoming south 15 to 20 miles per hour in the afternoon. Winds could gust as high as 30 miles per hour. Chance of precipitation is 30%. Wednesday night, a 30% chance of showers and thunderstorms before midnight. Mostly cloudy, then gradually becoming mostly clear, with a low around 55. Breezy, with a south-southeast wind 10 to 20 miles per hour, with gusts as high as 30 miles per hour. Thursday sunny and hot, with a high near 90. Breezy, with a south wind 10 to 15 miles per hour increasing to 15 to 20 miles per hour in the afternoon. Winds could gust as high as 35 miles per hour. Thursday night, partly cloudy, with a low around 53. Breezy, with a south wind 15 to 20 miles per hour becoming northwest after midnight. Winds could gust as high as 30 miles per hour. Friday sunny, with a high near 83. Friday night, mostly clear with a low around 51. Saturday sunny, with a high near 85. Saturday night, mostly clear with a low around 54. Next Sunday sunny, with a high near 86. Next Sunday night, partly cloudy, with a low around 54. Next Monday sunny, with a high near 86. Next Monday night, partly cloudy, with a low around 54. And next Tuesday, a slight chance of showers. Mostly sunny, with a high near 85. That is your weather outlook for the next week. A few isolated showers and thunderstorms are possible this afternoon and evening, mainly in Carbon and Albany counties. Precipitation chances increase for Wednesday and Thursday before ridging returns to the region for the weekend. 
elevated to critical fire weather conditions will become possible once again on Thursday.